So this video is going to talk about the inverse trigonometric functions. And if you guys recall from algebra, when you want to take the inverse of a function, the function must be one to one, which means that its graph must pass the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. So if it passes the horizontal line test, then it's a one-to-one -one function. If it passes the vertical line test, it's a function. Well, we know that sine and cosine, you know, they go up and down, up and down forever. They're not going to pass any horizontal line test. If I hold a pen horizontally, it crosses multiple times. So they're not one-to-one. -one. However, what we do with a trigonometric function is we restrict the domain so that we can actually find its inverse. So <clears throat> I'm not going to go into too much detail with that. If you guys need a little more information about that, then we'll talk about that. But <clears throat> if you want to take the inverse of a sine function, you need to recall, you need to remember that the angle that it is equal to is an angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So if you think about it, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 is either going to be quadrant 1 or 4. Quadrant 1 or 4. Cosine inverse, the angle that is coming out of a cosine function is restricted between 0 and pi, which if you recall is quadrants 1 or 2. Cosine is negative in quadrant 2 and positive in quadrant 1. Sine is negative in quadrant 4 and positive in quadrant 1. And then we'll do sine, cosine, and tangent, inverse tangent. The angle that comes from an inverse tangent function is limited between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 again very similar to sine inverse, quadrant 1 or 4. The only difference is that this is not inclusive. This is inclusive, including the endpoints. So we're not including negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Now the hardest part, again, is remembering these limitations. Okay, Once you do them a few times, though, it shouldn't be difficult. So here we're going to find the exact value of the trigonometric function. And these are going to come from the unit circle. So I really need you guys to know the unit circle very, very well. If you're not sure about things from the unit circle, then check my unit circle video to do some quick um, prep with that. So let's do sine of the square root of 3 over 2. And I want to find the exact value of sine inverse of the square root of 3 over 2. Now, <clears throat> I tell my students all the time that anytime you want an inverse trigonometric function, you always know that it's equal to an angle. But you have to remember the angle that you choose, if it is sine, is restricted between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, so anytime you want to do an inverse trig function, it's always equal to an angle, but you just have to remember what is that angle restricted between. Okay, where is it located? What are the limitations on it? Now, if you want to rewrite this, I can rewrite this if sine inverse of a ratio is equal to a degree or an angle, then sine of the angle is equal to the ratio. Once I flip these two, this and this, then it goes from an inverse function to a regular function. And we can go back and forth as much as we want. Okay, anytime you flip or switch the inverse function to the basic function, you're switching the angle on the ratio. An inverse function is always equal to an angle sine of the angle is equal to the ratio. Now you have to think of the location or what is your reference angle for this. Where is sine of an angle equal to square root of 3 over 2? If you recall that's the small pi over 6 in radians or 30 degrees. More than likely you guys are going to do it in radians. Pi over 6 or 30 degree angle. Now again this is the reference angle. I have to now determine this angle in the proper quadrants that matches this um, limitation that also gives me a positive sign. Both for sine and tangent, it's very easy because it's quadrant 1 or 4, and it's between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So they're basically reference angles. So the answer for this one is simply pi over 6. The reference angle is pi over 6. I want it in quadrant 1 because sine is positive in quadrant 1. 
And so my answer is pi over 6. Okay, I'm going to do another one. Find cosine inverse of negative 1 half. Okay, again, the inverse of a trigonometric function is always equal to an angle, but you have to think about what are the limitations of the angle. And if it's cosine, then the limitations are between 0 and pi. Okay. Now, if you want to represent this in a form that you're used to, if I have cosine inverse of negative 1 half equal to an angle, then I can write cosine of that angle is equal to negative 1 half. And then now, I have to think about the angle that satisfies this within this limitation between 0 and pi. So the reference angle, the reference angle is either the pi over 3 or pi over 6. It's the pi over 3, the bigger of the reference angles, the 60 degree case. And because it's negative, that tells me I'm in quadrant 2, right? Quadrant 2 or 3, but this does see this limitation on my angle does not exist in quadrant 3, so I'm in quadrant 2. So now I want to think of the angle in quadrant 2 with reference pi over 3. That's 2 pi over 3. So there's my answer for this inverse trigonometric function. Okay, let's do another one. Tan inverse of negative 1. Same thing. I want an inverse trigonometric function. Anytime I have an inverse trigonometric function, it is equal to an angle. Then you have to think about how that angle is limited. If it's a tangent, then it's limited between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 in not inclusive, right? Because it doesn't, doesn't exist at ne negative pi over 2 or pi over 2. It's undefined. Okay. <clears throat> Once we do a few of these, you'll start remembering these limitations on the angle. Again, if tan inverse of negative 1 is equal to an angle, then I can say that tangent of the angle is equal to negative 1, right? I'm switching the ratio. I'm switching the ratio with the angle, and therefore I go from an inverse to a basic function. And now I have to think of that angle. The reference angle would be pi over 4. Pi over 4 is the reference angle for when tangent is 1 or negative 1. What quadrant would it be? Tangent is negative in quadrants 2 and 4. But the limitations on theta are either quadrants 1 or 4. So I'm going to choose quadrant 4 because tangent is negative. My reference is pi over 4, and it has to be an acute angle. Negative pi over 4 is my answer. Done. Let's do another one. I'll do a few more so you can start seeing the repetition of it. Sine inverse of negative 1 half. Same thing. I want an inverse trigonometric function, and an inverse trigonometric function is always equal to an angle. I have to think about how that angle is restricted because it comes from an inverse trigonometric function. And for sine, it's limited between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 inclusive. Again, same movement. If sine inverse of a function or of a um, ratio is equal to an angle, then I can say sine of an angle is equal to the ratio. I'm switching the ratio. And, oops, sorry, I'm switching the ratio, <clears throat> right? I'm switching, switching the ratio with the angle. Once I do that, I go from the inverse function to the basic function. And now I just have to figure out which angle theta this would be. Reference, where sine is 1 half. That would be the pi over 6, the small little reference angle, the 30 degree case. Which quadrant would it be in? Well, sine is limited for its angle if it's an inverse between 1 and 4. So which one gives me a negative sign? Quadrant 4. So I'm going to deal with a reference angle pi over 6, quadrant 4 because this is negative. So, and of course the angle has to be an acute angle for sine. Negative pi over 6 is my answer. Couple more, what number am I on? Five. Let's look at five. Okay, I want to do cosine inverse of zero. Again, same thing. 
if I want to do an inverse trigonometric function, it's equal to an angle. For cosine, I have to think about how my angle is limited. 0 and pi, this is quadrants, right? 1 or 2. Now let's think of the next step. If cosine inverse of 0 is theta, I'm going to switch the ratio with the angle, switch these two. Cosine of theta is equal to 0. Once I switch these two, I go from an inverse function to a basic function. And now I have to think of the angle that satisfies this condition between or within quadrants 1 or 2. Well, where is cosine 0? Cosine 0 is up here at pi over 2, right? That's, of course, it's also down here, but we're talking either quadrants 1 or 2. So the answer, pi over 2. Hopefully you guys are getting the hang of this. One more, and then I'm going to stop. If you need more examples, just let me know. Comment. We're going to do one more tan. Tan inverse of the square root of 3. This is one of the more complicated tangents, right? Again, if I want an inverse trigonometric function, it's always equal to an angle. For tangent, that angle is limited between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Either quadrants, 1 or 4, just to make it easy. Let me go back to white. What's my next step? I'm going to switch the ratio with the angle. Tangent of the angle is equal to the ratio. Square root of 3. Once I switch these, I go from an inverse to a basic function. Now I just have to think of my reference angle and which quadrant I would be in. Tangent is positive, so it's going to be quadrant 1. My reference angle is either going to be the pi over 6 or the pi over 3. So I usually think of it in terms of the ordered pair. If I want the square root of 3 to stay on top, then the y coordinate has to be the square root of 3 over 2, and the x coordinate has to be 1 half. This is my reference of pi over 3. Quadrant 1 reference pi over 3, so my answer is pi over 3. If you guys need more practice or more information, or if you want me to do some examples from the unit circle, um, some more examples from the unit circle, or some basic examples from the unit circle, let me know, comment, give me feedback. Good luck on your inverse trig functions. There's more to come because there are more complicated situations.